Hi guys, Mark here at Blue Glow Electronics. Working on our new electronics workbench down in our new office in the audio barn that we're wrapping up. And I thought I would show you guys how I'm going about building my uh, shelving for my bench. So let's dive in and I'll uh, give you guys the details here. Okay, this is a kit from a company called 2x4 Basics, and it's really simple stuff. In the box here, what you see, this is just some super hard plastic of some sort, resin, and it's designed to hold 2x4s here. It's already pre-drilled with holes for uh, mounting things to, and there's a multitude of different scenarios you can put together here with these. I actually bought these, I think I got them either Amazon or Walmart.com, one of the two. All right, so what I did with the first one here was I turned it upside down. So it becomes more of a stand or platform here. As you can see, theoretically, this thing can move around and do what I need with it. And ultimately, if I want to, I can fasten it down to whatever desktop I'm wanting. Ultimately, I'm putting it together here at the front. Ultimately, I'll push this all the way to the back. And then what I'm, what I'm doing here, as you can see, I've just got some two by fours going straight up and down that are studs to hold kind of the suspension here. And then across here, I've got four two by fours. Believe it or not, pretty heavy set up. So if you don't span too much space with each of these between having another set of legs, uh, you will have no sag whatsoever. And I'm putting heavy equipment on this. Old um, Hewlett Packard spectrum analyzers, oscilloscopes, things of that nature. Some of these things weigh 60, 70 pounds. And this is the exact same setup I had up in my house previously that I've used for years and years now. Okay, as you can see here in my highly sophisticated CAD drawing number one, I was just kind of at the top here planning out my spacing uh, between each of the levels. So 15 and a half inches between the actual tabletop and the first one. And then each of these actually has an inch and a half thickness of the two by four itself. But in this picture, I was just trying to kind of trying to spend, plan out the spacing. And then you can see here my tabletop I drew and where my legs were. And I knew I needed 55 inches for the width of the two by fours on one side and 53 inches on the other. As you can see here on my second highly sophisticated drawing here, you know, then I added in the inch and a half per, which told me I needed four. And if you just added those up plus four times one and a half, that gave me 50 and a quarter inches that I needed to make my legs for this thing tall. And then, um, I didn't make mine quite symmetrical. Some of these are 50 inches and some of these are 53, and let me show you why. Ultimately, I'm gonna want these to sit right on top of my legs, and just the span of the room and how it laid out, that leg is not exactly in the middle. It's a little closer to the other side than this one. So that's why I've got 56 inches between these and only 53 inches between those, because I wanted my legs of my support up top here to sit directly on the legs that support the bench below it down here. So you get the idea now of what we're doing and you can see here, if I can scroll up, I've got a few more to put up here on the top here to finish out the top of the bench. Okay, you can see my stack of wood here that I'm using on a roll around cart to put this together with. So what all I did was I went down to my local hardware store and I bought the wood. Now in my case, I just bought six foot long ones and cut off the ends. I could have bought 12 foot long ones, um, but I wanted them to fit in the back of my Subaru Outback. I might could have gotten more, uh, maximized the number of pieces out of whatever if I would bought 12 foot long ones, but that would have involved hooking up a trailer and so on and so forth. So anyway, but I did spend about two hours at the local hardware store picking out the straightest six foot boards that I could possibly find. I went through two whole pallets full of wood to make sure I had ones where there weren't great big knots on the edges uh, that had been broken out and or whatnot. Made sure I got really straight wood. Then I brought them home and I just used a plain old um, kind of chop saw with 12 inch blade on it and cut all these to the lengths I needed. Uh, then I used a orbital sander and sanded the ends a little bit just to get rid of the rough edges. I just had some 120 grit paper in it. Took the rough edges off the ends. And then I used some Minwax satin stain and just used a rag and stained all of them. And the only reason I did that is I just wanted this to kind of blend in with the room a little bit here, a little better than they would have been if they'd have been in the raw. I did not go to the trouble of sanding off all of the, you know, the premium logos and whatnot off of these. Because once you get them in the shelves, if 
I hadn't told you that I didn't remove all that, you would never know it because it'll get covered up by the equipment in the room. All right, this 2x4 Basics kit comes with these screws right here, and they're about an inch and a half long, and they're fairly solid, and I've been using those anywhere I need weight support. So from the sides here, here, all the way around. So there's there's actually four screws going into every one of these little braces at each point here. However, when it comes to holding the shelves themselves on right here, I have shifted over to using just plain old little drywall screws. The reason being, these are super sharp. They go in super easy. They're, they're not holding any weight. They're just making sure this board stays attached to this. So you're screwing up from in. And by the way, I'm using a short little stubby driver here to get them up in there. But these go in so much easier and uh, so much easier to deal with than these uh, bigger screws here. So for holding, you know, drilling up into these to hold these on, uh, no weight, all the weight's just gonna sit here anyway. Much easier to work with, so. Give you a short feel for some of the assembly. So the next shelf up's 10 inches um, from here to here. So I just measured here to here and you can see I put a little mark on here at 10 inches and I put one back here as well. Then all I've gotta do is take this down just a little bit until I get the top of this one perfectly right there on 10 inches. Then I'll use those metal screws and come in here, 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 and here. There's three on each side there. And then it's a matter of laying the boards back on there. Super simple. I will tell you on the bottom ones here, I did let the wood go all the way to the very bottom. So the weight is really sitting on the wood, not on this plastic. And the plastic is more just there as a base. As you can see here, this is the 2x4 Basics website, and the basic concept is you buy these plastic or resin pieces, and then you go to your local hardware store, and you get some pretty simple wood pieces, and as long as you can cut them, and a matter of fact, Lowe's and Home Depot both, if you'll go in and buy wood and tell them you need it cut for you, uh, they will help you do that. Anyway, one thing I love about their website here, they've got all these different uh, customer submitted ideas, and this is the garage organization. You can see everything here from bin stacking to television cart to you name it. Uh, maybe I'll submit mine here for electronics workbench. All right, you're going to see here uh, the 2x4 Basics kit, the six pack, six pack I showed you. Now, there were actually, it would take three kits, two and a half kits to do this. You, that what I just did. So you'd need three of these at $52 plus another about $120 worth of wood, something like that. So all in 270 bucks, not bad. If you look at the price of industrial shelving and whatnot, uh, this is a good way to go. And you can see the last time I bought these was July, 2014. I bought 10 of the six packs back then. I used some for in the house. I put the rest down in the barn and I finally nine years later got around to using the rest. But when I bought them in 2014, they were $22 a pack. So uh, inflation is real, guys. And here we are with the finished product. That is 10 linear feet of heavy duty shelving that you can put 300 pounds or more on each shelf there. So lots and lots to hold test gear. Um, and I think it worked out well. And you can see the supports are sitting right on top of my, my legs of the bench there. So uh, once you fill it up with gear, you want all this, uh, the black pieces in between kind of all fades into the gear. You really don't see it all. All right, there she is. I still got a lot of gear to transition from the house down here. I'm kind of in the middle of that. I'm trying to test everything out, clean it, make sure it's still kind of within spec and calibration as I move it down here so that once I get this bench all done, I know it is exactly what I want. So, but anyway, you get the idea. This thing can hold a whole bunch of equipment. Uh, I'm guessing that's three, four, 500 pounds worth of equipment sitting there right now. Love the bench, love how it works. Like I said, you can make them any height. You can measure your specific pieces of gear. And uh, I did a little bit of that here in the middle, down on the bottom uh, where the Variac and the uh, Scope and the um, 8903's at. That's shorter than the ones above it because uh, it kind of measured the pieces of gear I had going straight across there. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. And uh, if you need an electronics workbench or any kind of bench that requires uh, this kind of setup, this could be for you.